Yeah. But nonetheless, you're welcome for Garage this morning. Oh, yes. My name is Jonathan Onyango. And my name is Martha Onyango. <laughs> yes, we are very glad to host you this morning for Garage. Yes. Yeah, Psalms 122 says that I was glad when they said unto me, to go to the house of the Lord. I hope you're excited yes. and glad to come to garage. Even though it's a wet morning, you can call your friend with a car and they hit you with a ride. If you can also call your border guy, it does, let not a little rain stop you Mercy from Lord, joining. Border guy. <laughs> or call an I'm Uber just saying. at least. Call just an saying. Uber, a safe car, so that you're able to come to garage this morning. That's true. Well, this past weekend we had Proclaim 2024. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Did you attend Proclaim 24? Oh, yes, I did. Oh, oh yeah. what it was, was your amazing. biggest highlight from Proclaim? My biggest highlight is the... Uh, my biggest highlight, two, actually. One was that we, we got to experience so many... Um, international preachers that came in and such were exposed to so much more than we usually are uh, in terms of just learning how to be a leader and pastoring and uh, all that but uh, one of the things that really stood out for me was when our own pastor Quaker um, was preaching and he talked about the ages that Jesus' disciples started serving wow. and you know uh, what the Bible talks about um, Prophet Samuel and when he started serving God, just generally showing us that uh, do not water down the, the, the gospel. Teenagers. Yeah, the gospel yeah. for the teenagers that, you know, if you're 30, you should be teaching. Wow. Mercy Lord. Yes. Anyway, my highlight, <laughs> I think my biggest highlight was a statement made by uh, I think Dave Ferguson, the, yes. the visionary for new things. Yes. Uh, he said that if your dream is doesn't make you dependent on God, yeah. perhaps it's too small. Yeah. Yeah. So think about that statement yes. and make your way to garage, make your yes. dream big or bigger. Yes. Share that link with someone that you know that needs to be at garage this morning. Wherever yes. you're joining us from, we want yep. to say hi to you. We want to tell you that you're most welcome to worship harvest. Share that link and join us in the next service I in a few a minutes. Surprise. What surprise? Do you know what? What? At 10 a.m. <laughs> There is an amazing preacher. Are you sure? From international land. Wow. You don't want to miss the 10 yes. a.m. service. Yes. Even in this service. It's going to be good. So join us in three. See you in garage. Thank you.
and together with my amazing husband, Uncle Yo, we are excited to be your host for today. Greet your neighbor to the left and to the right, and then take your seat. <laughs> wow, wow, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah, in case you greeted someone who has a different accent from you, don't get too shocked. Yeah, this week we had Proclaim 2024. Yes! Woo! Welcome awesome. back. Welcome back, everybody, from Proclaim. What an amazing event it was. So many amazing preachers, people of the word, ministers, men hey. of God, hey. women of God. Hey. So just, I feel like even in the break time interactions, eh, I was being ministered too. Because so there's much, so, so many much, people so here much. was yeah. so full of wisdom. So it was such an amazing time. I hope you all enjoyed it. So welcome back once again. Oh, yes. What was your main highlight? My highlight was the Proclaim Awards. Hey. Hey. It was so good to see the diligent men and women of God being rewarded for the good work they are doing, including our very own Pastor Ari. Yeah. Our location was shining. Shout out to Washiba Vesgayaza, yes, who was the best Gaza overall well. location. If you did watch the Proclaim Awards, go back and see it. It will inspire you. Next time, maybe you'll want to be on that stage. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so thank you very much, everyone, for the work you do throughout the year. Shepherds, people who go out and do life in the communities where oh, you yes. live. It oh, is yes. such a blessing. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Now, we have some special people in the house. Hey. Hey. If you know that you're here for the very first time at Worship Harvest Nadia, I want you to put your hand up. We want to Come show you the love the Worship Harvest way. First time guest in the house, first time guest in the time. house. Anyone here for the first, first time? time? Oh, yes, hey. yes. Let's Woo. give them some love, our people right here. Wow. There they are. Take their numbers. Um, there may be something <laughs> for you after here. Hey. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. You're welcome to come next Sunday and the Sunday after that and the yeah, Sunday yeah, after yeah. that. Make that your seat. You're most welcome. Amen. And we are also glad to have some of our pastors from other churches in the house. Welcome. Thank you for joining us for Garage. Now let's let our first time guests know who we are. We are a movement of the gospel discipleship and mission. And we exist for the purpose of catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities. And as a result, the world. And what do we do? We plant life-giving, disciple-making, community-renewing churches. And we believe that church begins on Monday, and Sunday is garage time. Woo! Beep, beep. Yeah, yeah, and right here at Worship Harvest, we do this life in communities through what we call missional communities. Oh, yes. Yes, if you've never heard of missional communities, or MCs as we abbreviated, they're where we go out and do life in the spaces where we live. We go and catalyze the spiritual, social, and economic renewal. Yeah, yeah. We meet, we grow together spiritually and these MCs are beacons in those areas of change. So if you're not in a missional community, at the end of this service, in the foyer, you'll find someone there where you can register. Oh yes, now let's turn our eyes to the screens for the updates of the week. Are you a free radical? I'm not a free radical. I hope there are no free radicals in this place. Are there any? A free radical is somebody who is not in an MC or a small group or a cell, whatever you call it. So let's say this is kept the rev is moving at a certain pace, and then he hooks himself on to <laughs> that's the art of following. Find someone who is moving at a pace that gives you a headache and hang on. The only reason you would come here, right, to worship harvest to a multiply conference is because you're somebody who wants to have a big dream. Do I get an amen? We are supposed to pray for the workers. God's biggest problems is the workers. There are no laborers. Go and go for Go and go for Against me. Against me. Shall prosper. Shall prosper. He could not prosper. He cannot prosper. When the Holy Spirit comes in Acts chapter 2, and the Bible says Peter stood and preached, and the 12 stood with him, it was still just standing with Peter, preaching, and 3,000 are coming to the Lord. Meanwhile, yours are in the toilet cleaning. What if you begin 
to arrange your schedule the way Jesus arranged his schedule. About 25% of your time getting ready for Sunday morning, but you spend 75, and more accurately, 73% of your time investing in the few. These, because I know long term, this is what's going to create movement. When I have to be rebuked and I take it in, I can't take that atmosphere home. When we are at home, we are at home. Yes, mm. we you left are sweet those things. Uh, yes, we left those things at work. Yes. So for those of us who are married, you can't now start bringing those things into the bedroom because you rebuked me at home. Oh. The truth of the matter is, God will put you under leadership to make you better. So the closer you are, the more wiser and the more careful you should be not to become a Judas. Judas are not people in the crowd. Judas are people in the front seat. Everything your church and movement needs, God already released it from heaven and it is in multiplication mode. And the only reason you haven't yet run into it is you're not multiplying at the right rate. Anointing upon up more has created room for him in ministry, in church growth. He has a room called church growth. He has a room called multiplication. He has a room called uh, 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 MC. Missional communities, discipleship, it is not just strategy, it is the anointing. The local church is the hope of the world. That's why after many years of missiological research, it has been discovered that there is local church planting. That is the key to world evangelization. Dust is a sign of poverty. That's why it says that you shall subdue the earth, the earth. Every time you can see real ground, earth, you know, earth, dirt, you know that someone has not subdued something. Guys, the worship team is not the team that comes to spend time or to entertain people as the pastor comes to teach. There is real impact. People get healed. It's time to grow. It's time to spread the gospel. It's time to make the world a better place. So do the Apostle Mangaliso free radical dance. Those who are not in MC, free radicals. We shall test you. Hello, worship harvest. My name is Christian Suna. Uh, I'm here to share my story at worship harvest. You guys, this thing was so interesting. Uh, first of all, I was invited by a friend of mine, my cosmet. And uh, he told me to come on a Saturday. Actually, that Saturday, I didn't have any program. Aston wasn't playing. And he told me there will be free food and transport was sorted. So I decided to come and be around to see what's going to happen. Uh, when, I joined, when I came here, the guest experience team invited me with warm hugs. And these guys were so wonderful. People were praising me. My sneakers were good. Everything on me was so fine. So. Uh, I enjoyed the summons, Pastor Beatrice, Apostle Moses, man, those guys are wonderful. Then, uh, actually, they gave me a reason to think about myself, and uh, I had to come back so that I can get the same love and experience I had gotten that very day. And to be honest, I've always gotten that each and every single day. Every week that passes, all I think about is Catalyst. Every week, Garage. So, just know, I'm so into this. Hello, Worship Harvest. My name is Herbert, and I happen to come from the best MC, and that is Prosperous MC. Well, my first encounter with Worship Harvest was in 2022 when I traveled up country. Uh, I was in, uh, it was Arua. I went there and trust me, the way these guys welcomed me, ah, you know, people come hug you from behind, this one comes from this side, and my God, you don't find this anywhere else. But when I came back, I faced a lot of challenges keeping up with the transport since I stayed far. You know, coming here was really hard. So what I did, I just decided to stay home. But uh, then one day, Catalyst, I saw this post on my friend's status and I'm like, bro, he's here by the way. I'm like, bro, you want to leave me behind? So he took me along. Then as people were dancing, I don't know what got into me. I'm this shy person. I'm this person who doesn't want to talk to people. But I just found myself on stage. I'm like, oh my God. I was on stage, I'm on TV. I was just really, really surprised. Come on, you guys, with this love. <laughs> ah. well, hello, everyone. My name is Choda Joshua Shadrach. I was invited by the two of them to come to worship harvest. Before I had some 
difficulties in my relationship with my family, my mom, my sisters. And also I could not associate with people. I was so shy. I was, I don't even know. It was not Kawa, that's it. <laughs> but then I got invited to worship harvest by these two friends of mine. I talked to him. Then he told me some nice words that I didn't even expect out of him, but <laughs> they came out of him. So, And I took them personally. Then I decided to come to pray. When I entered, I sat in them. I was, they were so free and the energy was, yeah, levels. Then I decided to give my life to Christ. So I gave my life to Christ that day and I held the pastor's hands. I, I got so blessed actually. <laughs> I held the pastor's hands and uh, it was really so nice. So after that, everything started moving on well. I got back my relationship with my mom. My sisters, we are, we are talking. I'm financially blessed. And I got into the best MC ever. And that is Prosperous MC. Thank you so much. Hey. Psalms 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Ha! What's up, everybody? My name is Steve, but you can call me Steve the Rev. See, the Lord has been good, and you need to keep on praising Him. Now, sometimes God is at work, but you're not paying critical attention to what He's actually doing. Sometimes you have so much good health that you don't see it. Sometimes you're, having, you're abounding in favor, but you're not paying attention to it. But God has been good. But I want to point your attention to something. Do you know that altogether you have pledged? 8.340 billion Uganda shillings mm -hmm. and so far you have given 3.873 billion Uganda shillings now let me sweeten this for you as of last year the first week of December 2023 you all together had given 4.152 billion Uganda shillings to put the icing on the cake that means we are only 279 million shillings away from the giving of almost the whole year last year. What that means is God has been good. I need you to just hold your arms, turn to your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, your generosity is blessing me. Ah, if you don't turn to them, I don't know. Guys, thank you so much for your giving towards Arise and Build. God is going to do great and awesome things for you. Let the praise continue. Praise the Lord. Wow, thank you very wow. much, our media team. I hope you've all been blessed. Yes, and you, as you can see, you're already the most generous church around, so I don't need to coerce you. We are going into a time of giving. I know your overture is ready. And if you want to give on mobile money, the number is 0778 for MTN and 0758 for Airtel. For Momo Pay, it's 148722 and Airtel Pay, 1160032. And for those who want to give via M Pesa Pay Bill, it's 4062191. And on our website, you can give to www.worshipharvest forward slash give. All right, let's welcome the worship team, everybody, as we get into a time of giving. Thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou Thou 
changes not thy compassions, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. us as you saw in the video they are not the entertainment group that comes before the preacher welcome to garage hey on this sunday a 
beautiful rainy morning can you get up on your feet and help me greet five people with just a fist bump for now we are using fist bump so that you know in case your neighbor had red eyes during the week you don't want them to transfer the same to you welcome welcome so good to see everyone hey what a blessing tell your neighbor neighbor you are blessed tell them you're blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ tell your neighbor neighbor I see you going higher in the things of the Lord I see you making many disciples leading many people to Christ planting churches opening mega businesses tell your neighbor neighbor you might be employing a thousand people soon if you listen to business garage <laughs> tell your neighbor neighbor don't look too serious the joy of the lord is your strength all things are working for you you are advantaged in christ you are the salt of the earth the light of the world the one everyone is looking for to solve the problems. Hey! Hey, hey! Hey, hey, hey! Hey! hey. Now you can sit down. <laughs> you like it already? I know. You know when you come to garage, on Sunday and it's raining <clears throat> you must be happy because everyone is wondering hmm? now those of you are looking at me with a bad eye wondering where Pastor Jimmy is because I promised that Pastor Jimmy Macharia would be here who are they? Pastor Jimmy is coming for the 10 o'clock service so those of you who are watching me under your blanket, what's that church called? Pyjama Community Church. PCC. Members of PCC. This is the final boarding call for you to be here at 10 o'clock. Don't say rain. Rain In other countries, they have snow. You, you only have rain and you can't move. What, what kind of poverty is this? And you want to be global. You have been going, applying for visas. You know, you, maybe they've not given you because you can't handle. If you can't handle rain, you can't handle snow. <laughs> but, but those people are not in worship harvest. Yeah, are you in worship harvest? You know. what, what a blessing. Thank you for coming out. Uh, we started this service as an experiment. Because our 9 o'clock service, we couldn't get parking for all your cars. And, uh, yeah, since we started, it looks like it rains every Sunday. <laughs> yeah, they, they are really separating the sheep from the goats. But, who said there is violence? There is no violence anywhere. What a shock. I'm blessing you. No, no, there are no wolves in the... We are sheep. We are the sheep of his pastor. Amen. Now you need to behave yourself because we have some elders in the house. Yeah, and some of you, when the uncles come and the aunties, then that's when you start trying to eat the food on the, on the visitor's plate. What a shock. So I need you to behave yourself. Yeah, especially Pastor Quaker. Who got a baby? Fresh Daddy. Fresh Daddy Kwaika, we congratulate you and Pastor Marley. Oh, yes. We are going to grow the church using all possible means. 
So those of you are dating endlessly. You've been dating for 18 years. Okay. Two years. You had professional data. Put a ring on it. Put a ring on it. Put a ring on it. You know when you start a song in one key and the band insists on staying in another key? They may have been washed, they may have come on a border border in the rain. So they are saying, why, why, why wash us when we already experienced? <coughs> Sit down. I told you we have... Yeah, these people... Pastor Lincoln is in the house. All the way from Liberty Christian Center, London. What an honor. What a blessing. Oh, yes. And I think he'll be going to, to no, worship others with Golobi. Oh, yeah. Many of the people who are at Proclaim will be visiting some of your locations. So the worship of with Golobi pastor is right here. Thank you for coming. We are so honored. Hey, what a blessing. We have some, so I'm, I'm starting with the elders, the proper elders. You may say I'm also an elder, but there are levels yeah, in eldership. Yes. Many of you may or may not have heard of Dr. Magara and Mrs. Magara. They are with us this morning. They were at Business Garage. Thank you for coming. They are, they are business apostles. They are apostles in the business world. Training business people, coaching business people, starting businesses, financial evan business evangelists. Many of you have heard of Vine Christian International, Vine International Christian Academy, Jubilee Dental, among many other things. Yeah, they are leaders with Deliverance Church, which is one of the fathers in the land. So we, we are very honored to have you here. And they've come with Professor Vincent and Nick Bogu. Yes. If you have heard of Institute for National Transformation, uh, that's where we stole many ideas and started Harvest Institute. So if you hear of Harvest Institute, we just stole all the ideas. He has been, he's from Nigeria, but he's a global citizen. He's not Nigerian. He has been training leaders all over the world uh, on bringing transformation. You know, church, that's why we say church begins on Monday, Sunday's garage time. We did not get saved to be evacuated. We got saved to transform the world. It doesn't say our Father which art in heaven. Mayest thou evacuate us from this terrible world and take us to that whence thou art. No, rather your kingdom come, your will be done. So Professor Vincent has been at the forefront of that. Some of you know Pastor, the name is coming. You all know I've read these books in, uh, in uh, Harvest Institute. Sunday at Delaja from Ukraine. Oh, yeah. So those are the linkages. So we have heavy anointing in the house. Can you appreciate and welcome please have your seats later on if i may preach but right now i'm i'm starstruck and too happy you know when you are yeah this is an introduction service yeah we have a new friend pastor dami from nigeria lagos is in the house thank you for coming and many of the location pastors are here pastor iris in the house so well, sit down and let me share with you something really short uh, and get out of the way for Pastor Jimmy at 10. Look, let me give you, this is like from one friend to another for free. Eh? Even if you are in this service, hmm? just hang around for the 10 o'clock as if you didn't attend this service. Because at 10, yeah. Unless you have never heard Pastor Jimmy preach. And uh, 
that your face reveals that you have never had Pastor Jimmy preach. Yeah, because you would be anticipating and smiling. I want us to talk about faithfulness. Now, don't think I chose the topic because of the rain. <laughs> the topic, <laughs> that rain found <clears throat> the topic, especially those of you watching me online. You might be thinking I'm aiming at something. I'm not aiming at anything at all, at all, at all. Yes. So our friends in all the other 114 locations, we welcome you, those who are joining us, in case you are streaming the message. So thank you for joining us. Worship Abbas, Gayaza, Downtown, Bugalobi, Chida. You know, many times I forget and people are not happy at all. Uh, and many others. Arua, we have here the pastor of Ongata Rongai is in the house. Kitengela is in the house. Juja is in the house. Those are from Kenya. Kigali is in the house. Nsasa is in the house. So all the locations that are joining us, we bless you. Thank you for being a part of what God is doing. Yeah, faithfulness. First Corinthians 4.2 Moreover, it is required of stewards that one be found. Are you a steward? It's not steward. It's steward. It is. Re it doesn't say it is suggested. It is what required. Many years ago, when I was a young man, younger man, I'm still a young man. In the village. When my mom traveled, she left her bedroom key with me. Because the way it worked then, I don't know how it works now in your house, is most of the valuables were kept in mom's bedroom. Yeah, but she made sure she left the key behind with someone that she would consider to be faithful. And that was me. What a blessing. So I did my best to be a faithful steward of that key by making sure no one accessed the bedroom in her absence and that everything she left there, she found intact. Amen. I don't know. Your neighbor looks like they've never left them with anything, but... <laughs> Your story is changing. So one day, she went to town and left me with a key, but she came back earlier than I anticipated. Yeah, because she always came back in the evening. We knew the routine when she traveled. Now, this time she came back in the afternoon. And behold, I had gone to play and visit my friends. And there was no phones or WhatsApp, so she couldn't access her bedroom for hours because I was away on my own things. When I came back, tell your neighbor when he came back. This is a good story. I'll tell you the rest of the story next week. This is next week. <laughs> anyway, I was at an age where she couldn't spank me. But our interaction revealed that if she could, she would have spanked me. But she spanked me with words. She spoke to me in Lusoga. I will not tell you the Lusoga version. We are an international church. So she said in Eng the English version that my son be the meaning would be the way she put it is be being faithful and you'll be entrusted with much. Yeah. That was her rebuke. I still hear it as if it was last evening. 
Yeah. Be being faithful. That's the English interpretation. It's not be faithful. It's be being faithful. And you'll be entrusted with much. That's why Paul writes to the Corinthians says, it is required. It's not a suggestion. It is a requirement that if you are a steward of anything, you must be found faithful. Now, you cannot say, I'm not a steward of anything. Every one of us are stewards of something. You're a steward of your own life. Do you know that you did not breathe life into yourself? The life you have is not your own. Someone breathed in, into you. God breathed life into you. So we are stewards of our own lives. So, for example, so you cannot wake up one day and take your life. It's like when they have entrusted you with a business, a shop, and you are just a manager, and you decide to close the business without telling the directors. That's suicide. Yeah, you're, you're ending a thing that is not yours, for which you don't have authority to end. Are you following? The church is quiet. Are we together? If you're married, you are a steward of a marriage. Your marriage is not yours. You see, that's a mistake people make. Once you think the marriage is yours, you're going to mess it up big time. Yeah. Your marriage is not yours. Can I invite the most beautiful girl in the world? Why are the pictures people? This is even annoying. Now, think about this marriage here. This marriage is not just for love, being in love and what? This marriage is a stewardship which has an impact on tens of thousands of people. So once, if I start speaking unkind words to her and abusing her, I'm compromising the destiny of tens of thousands of people. Tell anybody it's not about you. You can... Stewardship. Many of you are employees in people's companies. You didn't give yourself the job. So you're required to be faithful. Faithful. Uh, later, if you don't keep as quiet as you are, I will tell you four things on how to be faithful. I said later. Right now, I'm trying to rub in the salt. <clears throat> yeah. Faithfulness, guys, that's the thing that separates people that work for God and those who gave up and on their own things. Do you know that even as an employee in a company, you're a servant of God, not a servant of that company? Ah. I forgot to introduce Pastor Isaac. Because the Aret Ministries International, his church was the best performing church in the mentorship in the Proclaim Awards last evening. You're welcome, sir. Faithfulness. As a, as a spouse, as a parent, you're a steward. The children are not yours. <laughs> Let me tell you what shows that the children are not yours. They will still be around after you've gone to heaven. That means they are not yours. And that's, it had better work like that. They shouldn't go before you. So start walking 10,000 steps, eating vegetables, and less certain things. S sleeping enough time, seven to eight hours a night, to, pro, to make your body, because this is also not yours. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Look, at the end of the day, when you analyze, you have nothing really. <laughs> you and I, we have nothing. We are just 
stewards of our bodies, of our marriages, of the children, the employee, the jobs, the department you lead, the business. You know, business people, they have this flawed idea that their business is theirs. They think it's their business. That's why you don't separate the business finances from yours. Business, you're you're eating the business. No processes, no systems. That business, if it could sue. <laughs> yeah, there some of you, you're improving stewards of the businesses. Seriously, let me tell you. As long as you think it's your business, it's going to remain a small thing. Now, I've gone all that way, but how about the church? Imagine me here thinking that this is my church. What a shock! It's not my church. Location pastors, it's not your location. Zone of pastors, it's not your zone. MC Shepherds, it's not your missional community. Now, Quietness Presbyterian has also joined us. It's getting personal. It is required. Faithfulness is a non-negotiable. It is a requirement. Yeah. And every time we start negotiating faithfulness, things start being interesting in not a good way. You know, interesting in Chinese is not interesting in English. Are you following? As, as, when you're a, a team member, you're on the worship team, you're on the guest experience team, you're on the children's church team, you're on the media team, it is a stewardship. You were appointed to, sing, to lead in worship, to play an instrument. And you know these guys, they really carry out their stewardship very excellently, as you can see. The sopranos didn't text in saying it's raining, we are not coming. Have only two harmonies to, this morning. Two-part harmony worship. <laughs> But it is required. It is what? Required. Now, where does this whole idea come from? Let me show you something. Look at 2 Timothy 2.13. It's going to show you something, why it is required. One, two, let's read. If we are faith, faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. The reason faithfulness is, is a non-negotiable because it's a core key characteristic of God himself. That's why we were singing, great is thy faithfulness. If you go in the Bible, actually, you find that the faithfulness of God is the dominant subject, not the faithfulness of man. <laughs> ah, ah. Let me try this side. Yeah, I think these guys, these guys are... Huh? In the Bible, the person they refer to more as being faithful is God, not individuals. Faith, God is the one who is faithful. And we are all on a journey of learning faithfulness. Because as human beings, we are not born faithful. It is our nature to be faithless and unfaithful. I was listening to Bishop Doug the other day, and he said, um, he said, he went to a certain country, and the man of God told him that, Bishop, I don't know any man who is not a Christian who has been faithful to his wife. Yeah, he said, I don't know any man who is not a Christian who has been faithful to his wife? Not natural. 
Most men who are not Christians cheat on in their marriages. Most. I'm saying most. If you're here, your sister, you're planning to marry an unbeliever, I want you to psychologically prepare yourself for the pain. Yeah. Prepare yourself to share. Ah, look, you can go to one of those churches where you only talk about clouds and rain. Me and me, I'm going to talk about life, marriage. Oh, do you think it's not there? Let me show you a verse. Give me Proverbs 20, verse 6 in KJV. Yeah, let's go to the King James Version, authorized to be read in churches. <laughs> Uh huh. One, two, we read this. Most men will proclaim everyone his own, but a faithful man who can find. A faithful man who can find. It's like impossible to find. It's a good message. You like it already. A faithful man who can find. They are that rare. Why are they rare when there are 8 billion people on earth? How can there be 8 billion people and you are saying, okay, of them, okay, let's say half a man, 4 billion. And from 4 billion, you can scarcely find. It, one of, first of all, it shows you it is not natural to be faithful. It is natural to be to be. A traitor, a betrayer, inconsistent, disloyal, not holding on to lifelong things. You see, that's why marriage is for life. That's why you say, until death has to part. Not until you, until you, it's not until the juices run out. It's not until the body changes shape. Oh, you don't want me to talk about that. You are, you are staring me with your faces. You think I don't know that some people marry for shape. And there is shape shifting through life. <laughs> As people... Get pregnant, carry children, child one, child two, child three, child four, child five. Ah! There's changes. But when you found her on campus, she was thin. Hey. She was what? Figure eight. She was like a Coca Cola bottle. Five children later, she's like Nile Special bottle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you have the head and then everything else <laughs> from now on we consider no man according to the flesh now you who married for shape where are you going You, start, you have to adjust to the new shape. Yeah. yeah. It used to be that when you walk, you know that thing of putting the hand around someone's waist? You put the hand around until it is even touching you. It's like the waist is just... <laughs> Baby, I love you. Baby, I love you. Baby, I love you. Baby, I love you. 
I wanna spend the rest of my life with you. Baby, I love 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 you. I wanna spend the rest of my life with you. Then you came to church. You made the vows. Now when you take walks, you just hold the hand because try to <laughs> occupy it like half. <laughs> it's like let's just hold hands you know the hand doesn't change much because if you try the whole thing baby baby love you baby love you baby love you baby love you hey baby love you i want to spend the rest of my life with you tell your neighbor you're going to be faithful to the end It's not natural to be. So don't be surprised if you're getting faithless thoughts. Don't don't think that's how you're supposed to. Just know it's time to fight. Yeah, it's time to fight for your faithfulness. The Holy Spirit has been given to you to make you to do things that are not natural. The reason unsaved men are unfaithful because they don't have the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And you, you have the Holy Spirit. You cannot have the Holy Spirit and continue to... Because remember, it says God is faithful. He cannot deny himself. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes. You have the Holy Spirit. You have God in you. you he's, he, yeah, he's supposed to make you faithful. Unless you're ignoring him. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're listening. A faithful man who can fight. So it's not natural, but here is the good news. Once you set yourself apart as a faithful man, a faithful woman, you become of invaluable, this is bad English, value. Priceless value because now you are among very few people that can be trusted. You see, I don't leave this church because I'm the most anointed. No, it's not because I'm the best preacher. It's not because I'm the most gifted. No, I don't think that's what God looked for when he chose me to lead. I think he saw that this guy has real issues. But he might be able to stay faithful. Do you know what's going to get you promoted at work? Faithfulness. Do you know what's going to make your family stay together? Faithfulness. Do you know what's going to make you have night? You know one of the things, you, you know, those of you who are beautiful. <coughs> 30, below 30, let me lower that. Yeah, because okay. Those of you who are below 30, okay, or 40. You may not understand the value of friendships. You think you can make friends anytime. Oh, better be faithful to your friends now. When you're in your 50s, you will need them. You will travel long distances to just go spend some time with friends. In your 60s, you will be getting <clears throat> visas to just go and spend some time with friends. Because it's not easy to make friends later on in life. But how are you going to have friends in your 60s when you are faithless to everyone in your younger years? Your, your relationships are determined by advantage. If this one has something to give me, they are my latest friend. The other one, I chuck them. Ah! Make friends. Stay friends. A faithful man who can find. First sit down. I need to finish. <clears throat> So it is required of stewards that one be found faithful. God is faithful. Man is not naturally faithful. But the Holy Spirit can help you become faithful. 
And if you become faithful, you become a, a, a distinguished human being. Let me just put it that way. A distinguished human being. Because there are not many who are faithful. But your neighbor looks like they are a distinguished human being. Look at Proverbs 25, 13. It says, like the cold of snow in time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. A faithful person refreshes the soul of those who send them. Ah. Ooh. Beautiful. Look at Numbers 12, 7. When Miriam and Aaron were undermining Moses' authority, saying, does God don't they talk to Moses? And then God said, you guys come here. I want to talk to you. All, all three of you. Both of you three. There was a prefect in your school who used to speak like that. One, two, one, two three, both of you come here. <laughs> it wasn't a teacher. Why are you bringing teachers into this? One, two, three, both of you come here. You know, school teachers are interesting. They use, uh, yeah, they speak in parables. Yeah. You would go ask him for permission to go home. And the deputy could say, Can I see your back as the distance between us increases? By the time you work out, he's saying, <laughs> go away. <laughs> You're like, could you just, could you just, huh? can I see your back as the distance between us increases? Wow. So, Pastor Jonathan, I'm not saying you're the one, but. <laughs> so he says, not so with my servant Moses, oh, not Moses Mkisa, Moses in the Bible. He is faithful in all my house. Look at the next verse. The next verse usually, if you click like this, goes on. And it says, I speak with him face to face, even plainly, and not in dark sayings. Why? Because he's faithful. And then it says, why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant? God is telling Miriam, and Aaron. Why were you not afraid to speak against my servant? Why? Because this guy is faithful. Many of the, many of the families, he, those who are watching us from other countries, in Uganda there is this thing called house helps. People that come and live with you and you pay them some money to help you manage your home. Those of you who want to go to other countries, that option is not there. <clears throat> Yeah, you get there, you wash your own clothes, iron your own clothes, cook your own food, and then, yeah, and then still love your husband and your wife and whatever. So enjoy the luxury while it lasts. But one of the things, it's almost like a business, getting a faithful household who interprets instructions correctly and what. Many people find it very difficult. Pastor and I, we've been very blessed to have faithful people that have become part of the family, and now they are really part of the family. It's not even like whatever. But many people struggle. You ask, why, why, didn't you come to, why didn't you come to garage today? Oh, our house self left. Oh, she said her auntie was sick. She never came back. She lost a relative. Meanwhile, she didn't lose anyone to the shop and never came back she's still shopping what a shock so when you find a good one one who's been there with you 10 years they've raised their children they know everything you no longer make meal plans they make the meal plans they manage the household and then someone starts bringing problems with that person, you'd be like, why, why were you not afraid to... to huh? Maybe one of your relatives comes to stay with you and then they start quarreling with the house help because they are your relative and because they think the other one is not your relative 
so they can start antagonizing them. Why am I talking as if these are my only things? You can't relate, eh? And then your issue is if you side with your relative and start undermining your faithful servant, you will suffer the loss of having many households who come and go like many of you have suffered. You can change that by respecting them and being faithful to them. Because when someone is faithful to you, you, have, you need to be faithful to them. <coughs> oh yeah. And you find that you have to defend the people who are faithful to you. And say, so don't bring your stuff here. Some of you, you run companies. You've had that guy who has kept the books well. He has kept you out of trouble. He pays all the taxes on time. He makes sure things are organized. And then you bring in your nephew. Who is not even qualified. Then they start antagonizing everyone in the business. And then you are also there. You're not wise, man. Your business is going to suffer. Get up and be, defend the faithful people. So that's, this is what these guys were doing. They were starting to antagonize Moses. Yeah, like some other people may be dis tempted to antagonize me. And then God will come and have a conversation with you. <laughs> Not me, God. Ah, yeah, this stuff has happened. I mean, all my stories are true. There are people who think they were appointed to, to bring pain to the pastor. Like that's their calling. Mm. They are complainers, murmurers, dividers. Sc sc slanderers, accusers. Now I'm preaching for myself at least this next few seconds. Yeah. It's like when you become a pastor, it's like you've signed up for all those things. I remember Bishop Doug saying, by the time you have pastored 30 years, there is nothing they will not have accused you of. And I thought he was wrong. Now I know he was right. Some of the accusations I hear about myself I'm like, even me, I wouldn't want to be my friend. <laughs> ah! Like, that's what I do? I would be avoiding me. But God came and told these guys, this guy is faithful in all my house. Why are you disturbing and boy, I've seen some people, God talk to them in a way. Hmm. But let me continue. I told you, I, I have to tell you four things, and I'm out, almost out of time. But I, I, I want to show you another one. Just one more, then I tell you the four things. Are you sure? First Samuel 2.35. This is now God talking to Eli, who had allowed his sons to be bad stewards. He says, then I'll raise up for myself... You guys, we used to read these scriptures together. One, two, we go. Then I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house and he shall walk before my anointed forever. He was talking about uh, Samuel, that he was going to raise Samuel to take up in the house of Eli. He says, I will raise up a faithful priest. What will he do? He will... Who, he shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. Ah! Have you ever heard those people who they can anticipate what you need? That was Samuel. And Eli, God was saying, Eli, these sons of yours who have been messing with the offering and sleeping with people in the temple, I'm going to end your whole regime. But I'll raise up a faithful priest. Ah, yeah, yeah. Don't you just don't you want to be faithful? Don't you want to be the one who will God will build you a sure house and you shall walk before him forever? Amen. So there's faithfulness is very, very important. Fourth four aspects of faithfulness. 
as we finish. Four key aspects of faithfulness. One is love and loyalty. Oh, you are writing. I was wondering, has everyone fallen asleep in such weather? <laughs> One is love and what? Let me give you the scripture, then we talk briefly about it. Second Chronicles 19, 9. And he commanded them, saying, Thus you shall act in the fear of the Lord faithfully and with a loyal heart. You see, people think faithfulness is just the external things. No, if you behave externally, inconsistently with what's on the inside, you become a hypocrite. Just doing the right things without the right heart makes you a hypocrite. Okay. What's that scripture? Because you did not serve the Lord your God with what? With joy and, and gladness of heart. Deuteronomy 28, 27. 47. Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. For the abundance of everything. He says you serve your enemies. In other words, you're doing the right thing, but it's not with joy. It's not with gladness of heart. It says that's wrong. Oh. If you're married, you can't just be doing married people's things without joy and gladness of heart. Mechanical. <laughs> what a shock. <laughs> Robotic. You know, people in church struggle with marriages because no one tells them what to do. They say, this, you're too holy to understand those things says you'll get there somehow you'll know how it works no you will not know how it works yeah <coughs> and then you consult the wrong the thing because you've watched the wrong the, those bad movies where people act to be in love you think that's how it works and then you get married and try those and you know it doesn't work mercy this is my pastoral moment I'm helping your neighbor even though they are pretending not to be helped. Yeah, no mechanical marriages. With joy and gladness of heart. Pastor Joy, every time I say her name. <laughs> gladness of heart. This thing, faithfulness is heart. It's a heart thing. You see, you can be on the worship team and you're singing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mokobe, Mokobe. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Mokobe, Mokobe. But you know, if you're doing it without loyalty and love, even God says, because God looks at the heart, He can tell your mind is far away, it's your body moving. And somehow the voice is still there. And discerning people can tell. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moko Benit Mobo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moko Benit Mobo. Jehovah, there is none like you. Hey! That's why it says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. It's not just going to church and ticking off a box that I went to church. Do you love the Lord? The Bible says in the latter days men shall wax. The love of many shall wax cold. Your love can grow cold if you're not careful. Yeah. Beat your chest like this and say, Namutima, Namutima! Hey! 
faithfulness, the heart, love, loyalty. Point two. Second point, aspect of faithfulness is consistency. Yeah. That's why he says, not, with my, not so with my servant Moses. He's faithful in all my house. Look at Psalm 78, verse 37. Consistency. Psalm 78, verse 37. Let's see it together. For their heart was not steadfast with him, nor were they faithful in his covenant. Steadfastness. Wives, how many times is it okay for your husband to cheat on you? Like, considering it is a marriage of 70 years span, in the 70 years, shouldn't there be allowance for a few times sister? Statistically speaking, not ten times, at least once every seven years. They have Jubilee. <laughs> huh? Look, you have 365 days a year. Can't teach it even at least one. Well, you make an argument that one day a year you are allowed to go and sleep with whoever you want. Can, can't you allow that? Why? It's either this or that. There is no grading. This is electric. Thank you. <laughs> Consistency. If you say you're leading a, a mission or community. Now, you, you don't want your husband to cheat on you at least once every five years. But every few weeks, your MC doesn't meet. It's getting personal. Yeah. They ask, where is the mission or community report? Ah, you are not the rain you're not consistent but you want someone else you see we all want consistency but we don't want to give consistency we all want consistency but we don't want to give consistency yeah no 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 one no one wants anyone inconsistent in your life now, be that consistent person in other people's lives. Yeah. If you're a pastor, you can't close the church a few times a year because you were tired. It rained. No garage, no garage today. I need extra sleep. I got a running stomach. No. Consistency is an aspect of faithfulness. Yeah. Constance, that's the other word. Yes. Constance. Consistency. Constance. You know those people, you see like mint here? How many times have you come and is not here? Except when he has traveled for ministry and when he got married, he missed one Sunday. Because for obvious reasons. And he has evidence to show consistency. Not only him, but the whole team. But I want to point, I want to really appreciate him. He has been on stage playing keyboard for I don't know how many years. Stages have changed. At one time he was in Akawa, then in the small outer, I'm facing that side, now here facing that side, and who knows who we are next facing which side. But you can... You're not going to get him, is it? Mint is not here. No. That's why he's the one in charge. Now, you, you may be a better musician in your head at least. <clears throat> yeah, but you are watching me in bed. 
You are watching me from under your blanket. Yeah. While he's serving. Why? Because he's consistent and you're not. Ah. It's a man of God. You're blessing me. Even his name is Mwesigwa. Ladies, gentlemen, if you go and become the consistent person in the business, in the workplace, in the church, in your location, there's no way you will not be promoted. Because promotion comes from God, not human beings. Point three, we are out of time. Increase. Increase. Faithfulness is also increase. Remember the, the parable of the talents and the parable of the minors? Well done, good and faithful servant. Who did they tell that? The ones who multiplied. The one was given two, two talents and produced four. One was given five, they produced ten. The one was given one and presented one. He was called wicked. Shout wicked. Say, I'm not wicked. God is looking for faithful servants. So that's why we're always trying to grow the church, planting locations, multiplying missional communities, zones. Yeah? We, we were just a small little group there in Katikati in a bar a few years ago. We were even not 50. But now we are tens of thousands. Why? Because we are trying to be faithful. We are not sitting there congratulating ourselves saying we've done a good job. We've done nothing. There are 8 billion people in the world. The majority of whom don't know God. So you ever since you started your mission of community, is it increasing? Is your zone growing and multiplying? Is your location growing and multiplying? Because that's faithfulness. If you just sit there with your little group of seven, three years, you are still seven. <clears throat> the Bible doesn't say you're faithful. They say something else. That's why in this church, we promote people based on fruitfulness. Yeah, not pedigree what? You grow your MC, it grows, you multiply it, it multiplies many times, you become a zonal pastor because you, you are faithful. And you keep multiplying your zone, we send you to become a location pastor because you're faithful. You multiply your location, you plant two, three locations, you become a cluster leader. Because you're faithful, you, you're like this one. Stand up. Face that side. How many locations are in your cluster? Five. How many of the five did you plant from either yourself or the others? Three. And the one we sent my disciple to lead. No, that's four. You're not counting yours. Is it someone else plant yours? So she planted four and one she sent one of her zonal pastors. So all her zonal pastors. I think all your zonal pastors went to plant locations. The first zonal pastors that I had are all now location pastors. All the zonal pastors she had, she sent them out to plant locations. And she has now multiplied. How many people are in your cluster? About 720. About. Yeah, 720 souls are under her care. For you, maybe all you have to show is that you have been attending church for a very long time. But we come seeking fruit. We come seeking. Look, you can't scare me out of this. Yeah. What is the first one? Love and loyalty. The second one? The third is increase. The fourth and last, there are many, but I will only share four longevity. As in faithfulness is for life. There are many starters and few finishers. Yeah. You can't be faithful for just a few years. Do you know 
There are many, many people who have got into trouble, especially God's servants in the church, who did wonderfully for many years, and then towards the end, something goes wrong. And everyone heaps a lot of unnecessary, in my opinion, calls on their head and try to forget them and be as if they never did anything good. I don't think we should be that harsh. But, on the other hand, you have to be careful. Faithfulness is for life. I can predict how your marriage should end. One of you in a coffin. That's how the marriage ends. As long as you're still both breathing, the marriage can't end. It's for life. Faithfulness is for life. When you get ordained and they add the title reverend before your name, like Reverend Sarah Mukisa, you know she's ordained. Don't, don't joke around. It means that thing of Peter, I go a fishing, it's not there. Yeah. You, ministry is for life. You can't show up one day and say, No, I've left the ministry. Now I'm into timber and gold. <laughs> what are the four? What are the four? Love and uh huh, and longevity. Faithfulness is for. But I'm preaching to the best possible Christians around this part of town because, in spite of the rain, and I don't know whatever you got up and you came. You're faithful, you're serving, you're amazing. Can we stand and close this service? What a blessing. Ah. Just in your own words, just speak to the Lord. And where you have gone off on the issue of faithfulness, ask for his help. Because it is the Holy Spirit. In our own on our own, we are, we are not good enough to be faithful. Paul says that, I know that in me that is my flesh dwells nothing good. In our flesh is nothing good. But ask the, ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And in case you are going through a season of faithfulness, ask the Holy Spirit to help you to be faithful for life. Faithful in your marriage, faithful in your ministry, faithful to wherever God has called you faithful, faithful, faithful we bless you, thank you Lord thank you that we draw our faithfulness from you not from ourselves you are the one you are the one Lord, you are the one you are the faithful one you are the faithful God you are the amazing God our Father who loves us and you are faithful to us you will be faithful to us for eternity your faithfulness stretches even beyond our lives here on earth. And for that we are grateful. That we don't have to be anxious. That we don't have to fear what tomorrow brings. Because we know whom we've believed. And we are persuaded that you're able to keep that which you've committed to you against that day. We bless you, Father. We thank you. And friends, on this rainy morning, you may be here and you've never given your life to Jesus. Or maybe you're watching us online or you're in, at one of our locations and you're saying, Pastor, I need God in my life. I need to follow Jesus. I need the one who can help me be faithful. I want to pray with you. And if you're here or wherever you are, just put your right hand up and I'll pray with you to receive Jesus. You're saying, I've never given my life to Christ. I've never made a public confession of salvation and I want to give my life to him if you're here I want to see your hand put it up and don't put it down until I've seen it amen yes yes even on Sunday rainy Sunday morning people get saved there's every day the Bible says today is the day of salvation not tomorrow so if you're here don't let go of this opportunity okay all right ask your neighbor ask them the neighbor have you given your life to Jesus? Huh? Oh, 
is this one giving his life to Jesus? Is he going to be faithful for life? Is the parent here? Oh, you're the parent. Okay. Stay, stay with you. Amen. They, inst- they decided not to do it in children's church. He said, me, I want to get saved in big posters. Anyone else? What's your name? What's, it? What's your name? Oh. Wow. Let's celebrate this. Yeah, many of you got saved when you are very young. And it's stuck. Now let's pray with him. Just pray what I pray. And then all those of you who are online, including Pijama Community Church, and you've never given your life to Jesus, this is the moment. This child has shown us what to do. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus today, today I give my life to you. Because you're faithful to me. I confess that you died and that you rose for my sins and for my righteousness. Fill me with your Holy Spirit that I'll be faithful to you the rest of my life. Amen. Now if you prayed that prayer at any of our locations, there's a pastor at the front waiting for you or online there's a, a, a phone number scrolling on your screen please make sure to text or call that number amen Amen. so friends thank you for coming may god bless you may he cause his face to shine on you and give you peace may he make you faithful because it is he who makes us faithful amen and may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all now and forever Amen. Our 10 o'clock service starts at 10. And so we are, we'll be welcoming those who are coming. In other words, thank you for coming. God bless you. Enjoy the week.